Well, Robert Stokes, we're at the first ever Humanoid Robot Forum, and we're so excited here as A3 to be supporting you and your work in Humanoid Robots, along with all of your other friends and colleagues here. Um, we've got a special guest, though, at this interview today. Can you tell us about who is joining us? This is G1, and G1's our newest Humanoid Robot. It's the smaller, lighter version that's also less expensive. That It's the model designed to open up the ability for people to get more humanoids into their uh, facility and into their schools or into their manufacturing uh, plant. So. And what I was kind of amazed by this morning watching you set up, I thought, oh no, this is going to take all day to get this guy set up. But you guys just popped him out of his little container and he was pretty much ready to go, which yeah. is a testament to you and your technology. He comes fully ready to go. It's just a matter of pulling them out. It's much like the quadrupeds. Once you get them up, you're turning them on. Now, this guy we're running with the, a, a standard remote. Uh, when we put it into a manufacturer center, we run them autonomously. So if we're gonna have them walk around autonomously, there's a little more time to go around and map out the facility and those sorts of things. Right, okay, so yeah, let's dive into that because that's really what we're here doing. Humanoids for the sake of what they're doing in work, how they're making work better for humans. Um, you've been at the forefront of this technology for the over 15 years. Why are you so excited about how humanoid robots are transforming work and industry? And do you have any examples? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that makes me excited is if you go, you talk about 15 years. If you go back 15 years ago, the little humanoids we worked with were about this tall, and they would dance on the table. And we worked with um, Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical to create some healthcare solutions for those, and frankly came up with some solutions that would bring down um, pain in pediatric patients by using them for distractions, or we'd use them to increase compliance because we could send them home and they could monitor and talk to people. But the technology wasn't there yet. They weren't robust enough. They were easily broken. They were just very expensive for what they would do. What makes me excited is this guy here, there are models, not the highest end version, but there are models of this guy that I can sell for the same price that I was selling 15 years ago, the little toy level one. And so that's, that's very exciting. It actually makes this technology available. And they can go in and in industry, they can get in to do things like industrial maintenance, they can do production, they can do security. And one of the cool things is they can sometimes do all those things at the same time. Wow. And I mean, can you just kind of dive into that a little bit more? Why the human form in industry? Why does that make sense? Well, so we've already started doing this with the quadrupeds that have been around for a while. And we've started implementing those in a lot of different facilities. And they're just autonomously walking around doing inspection, doing industrial maintenance. But the world was built for humans because we're humans, so when we build our facilities, we build it for our workers. So the humanoids allow you to do things easier in a world that's made for humans. So when to go up and open an electrical panel, we can have the dog do it, but it's much easier to have a, per, a humanoid walk up, grab the handle, open up, just even opening a door. So much easier for a humanoid. It's where the levers, where the different things are positioned at. And then also there's the factor of interaction. When you're talking to another individual, sometimes they're more comfortable dealing with a humanoid figure. Now, we have to be careful because sometimes you can get the creep out factor. Same reason people can be scared of clowns, they can be scared of humanoid robots because they're a little too close to looking human. One of the things we focus on is um, in Stokes Robotics is trying to find the correct robot for the solution. So humanoid's not the best solution for everything, but there are several things it is the best solution for. And until very recently, we had to find ways to get other solutions to do what you'd want a humanoid to do. Now, many manufacturers are exploring robotics to enhance productivity. How do humanoid robots stand to transform tasks such as assembly, you've already mentioned, maintenance, quality control. What kind of applications are you excited about? One of the ones I'm most excited about is in the industrial maintenance area because there's a couple reasons. One, there's a huge shortage of workers in industrial maintenance. And so there's a need for manufacturers to find solutions, not just to reduce co worker costs, but to put 
workers in place. And if you don't have human workers, being able to put the humanoid in and do it. But the other big thing is to protect workers. It's so often there's uh, times where there's a dangerous situation. And it's much better to send a humanoid robot in to do it than it is to send a person. But the humanoids can walk around and the, the quarter, any of the robots can walk around and they can constantly be monitoring. They can be checking temperatures on bus ducts. They can be taking vibration sensor readings and looking for things that quite frankly, a person walking around doing it is more likely to miss. Because if I'm walking around with a monitor eight hours a day, I start to get bored. The robot actually just gets better at it. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, there's no kind of gap in what it's it's picking. Right, and it's going to run more or less 24-7. It takes a little bit of downtime, but no more than you would have at a coffee break for a person, and it never calls in sick. But like I said, the solution, the problem we have now is not that workers are being displaced, is that we don't have enough workers. Exactly, exact. to work around the clock doing these important tasks. So what challenges do you see industries facing when adopting humanoid robots? Um, and how have you kind of helped them overcome those? Well, there's a couple of big challenges. The first one is uh, when you talk about adopting humanoid robots, sometimes it's figuring out which robot is actually needed for the task. Whether it's a humanoid, whether it's a quadruped, whether it's a wheeled robot, a tracked robot. And if you're not careful, manufacturer can say, oh, here's the coolest looking thing, and they can invest their money in the wrong type of technology. And that's one of the things we try to work with companies on, is making sure that they're picking the right technology for the, the task. But then also, they, they have to run into issues like, is it IP rated high enough? Is it, what's its uptime gonna be? The programmability, can they chain the, the tasks? And one of the nice things that uh, we work with is we work with the companies doing that. We have open source on our technology so that we can go in and provide solutions for them, but then they can also go in and provide their own solutions. We've, we've started a leasing program because one of the pro other problems we've run into is people say, I bought a $100,000 robot, three years later, so why do I have this robot that's outdated? Because you know, if you imagine your three-year-old iPhone, it's the same sort it's of thing. It's a brick, these are coming out. So the lease programs, allow us to put the robots in, they pay for it, and then we constantly are updating to the newest models, and then when we remove the models out, we put those in an educational facility or something like that. The other challenge is workers aren't used to the technology, and the older workers, which you see in a lot of manufacturing areas, are less used to the technology. But so it's an advantage and disadvantage, because it does bring those students in, and young workers in who are like, this doesn't look like, you know, mom and dad didn't think working at a uh, manufacturing facility was going to be cool enough for their child. But then when you say, oh, I'm a robotics technician, that, then all of a sudden they're like, oh, my kid, he's brilliant. So. <laughs> it's very cool. And I wanted to actually talk to you about that because, you know, as the association, we really support education, bringing younger, younger people into this industry. So just kind of tell us a little bit about what you've done and how you've invested into the education in robotics. What we've done is, and we've got these in hundreds of schools around the country, that is we've written curriculum to teach Python programming, C++, to take basic engineering concept and mechatronic concepts. And the problem you see in STEM classes is often students who are good at it will drop out. And when you ask them why they're dropping out, especially underrepresented populations, minorities and women, you say, why did you stop taking these classes? And the number one answer, or one of the top two answers they give is, I don't see how it relates to my life or my community. And this allows them to learn programming. I mean, if you've ever taken a programming class, one of the first things you do is you teach the, the writer program to say, hello world, and it pops up on a screen. Well, having the robot say, hello world, or having it do something, you see instant feedback. Otherwise, your programming classes can sometimes be boring. You don't understand why you're doing it. You're learning a very important skill, but young people don't often see it. This allows them to see something quickly, a product of what they're learning. 
Absolutely. Now, you talked about, so humanoid robots, they're a, a part of the solution yeah. for automating in industry. How do they fit into that broader trend of, of factory, industry 4.0, and then smart factories? One of the things that I like about the, the humanoids is they're not just industry 4.0. They're, they're going to industry 5.0, whereas 4.0 was all about automation. And these guys are automated, but the industry 5.0 concept where we're doing a synergy of human workers and robots, that's where we're really trying to get to. So the robot can work autonomously, it can find things, but then it can also work beside a human worker, notify them, let them know what's going on, and be a helper in, in that. So you don't, it's not like the traditional arm where it's just grabbing something to put it on. It's going around and it's working as an assistant or working as a coworker to the humans and providing that extra level of, of synergy. And it's, it really takes it to a whole different level. That's very exciting. Um, now, how can humanoid robots help manufacturers tackle sustainability challenges such as reducing waste, energy consumption, you know, what are what are the other advantages as if I have a I have a facility, what is it going to bring me? Sure, one one of the things that the robots are able to do is they're able to go in and they're able to constantly do the monitoring. They're they're going to be able to check for, and have sensors put into them walking around where they can look for is there a leak? Is there something that's getting in and messing up the environment. It also, it runs on simple batteries. So it's not, you know, it's an electrical battery. It's clean when it's going in and they don't produce as much waste as a human worker does because, you know, instead of eating Twinkies or whatever and creating a lot of plastic wrap, it just eats lithium ions. Right, right. Well, Robert, it's really exciting to have you and your robot here at the first inaugural Humanoid Robot Forum. We're really excited to see where this technology goes. I'm very excited to be here. I'm glad you said you're excited to see where the technology goes because I am as well. I think um, over the last 15 years, the changes I've seen in the technology just make it very exciting to see what the next 15 years are going to be it like. It went from like a, a dream and I, an idea and it's just so real now. It's, it's happening now. The future is here and uh, thanks to you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>